You dirty, crooked <laughs> You stole shit out of our camp. Everything's gone. Shut up, go back to where you belong, and starve. It's Lord of the Flies here. Welcome to Outlast, where 16 lone wolves put their survival skills to the test. Flick it with your wrist. I'm tired, I'm cold, I'm wet, I'm hungry. Nothing's gonna be ideal. I won't survive without you guys. We're gonna eat good. What? With only one rule to win up to one million dollars, you have to finish as part of a team. We all know we can't survive alone out here. Or you go home with nothing. 110%, I'm gonna win this game. That's what happens when you let your emotions take control. You can't think straight. You will not treat me as some submissive little Nothing wrong with playing dirty. If they had the opportunity, they would slice our throats. Hi, Jill. Welcome to the spiel. It is a pleasure to have you on the show. You and 16 other people spend 30 plus days out in the Alaska wilderness. What was that experience like for you? Uh, thank you for having me, Tim. Um, I appreciate you all looking to talk to me. I hate to continue to use this term, but honestly, it was freaking traumatic. Um, <laughs> we get out there and we're thinking that we're going to live this kind of life similar to our producer's first show, Alone. And it was nothing like alone at all. You know, those people did not have to share their resources. They sure as hell did not have to fight each other for resources. And we did. You know, we, we got put in a position similar to this is where you're going to live. You, this is your quadrant. But if you look on the show, Alpha Team got slammed on like the steepest, most treacherous part of NECA Bay. And everyone else had semi-flat ground. Um, so we go into it with this totally mistrewn attitude of it's going to be like this. And it was the complete opposite. Each team is assigned a quadrant of the playing field. They can establish their base camp anywhere within that area. To establish their base, they have been given identical gear sets consisting of Yes. There it is. A hatchet. There it is. A knife. A sharp. A tarp. A wool blanket. That's a big wool blanket. A flashlight. Oh, man. A bow with eight arrows. That's what's up. A medical kit. First aid. There we go. A flint. That's our life. Two tin cups. To boil in. A map. We can find our way. Bear spray. Yeah, I think everybody should at least carry one of these on their personal item at all times. Yeah. And of course, four flares, one for each player should they choose. We ain't opening this. <laughs> nope, not at all. To quit the game. You guys can take this back. Now, again, spending 30 plus days out in the wilderness, no food, no, not many supplies. How did you physically and mentally prepare to even enter into this experience? <laughs> prepare? Uh, if I'm going to be completely honest with you, the only thing I did was gorge on sweet potato fries for like a month before I got on Outlast. <laughs> And I, I did that because I knew I needed fat and I was this petite female, you know, a, a buck 20, but I, I tacked on almost 22 pounds to go on Outlast and oh my gosh, that made all the difference. Oh Other than that, my mental mindset, you know, a lot of meditation, uh, a lot of um, self-awareness, you know, what do you want out of this, Jill? What do you want to go and do? What do you need to prove? You know, that's really fascinating because that, 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 that's, I was going to ask you what you take away from this game, but clearly that's the most profound thing that you take away from this game. In addition to possibly the million dollars. <laughs> true, very true. You know, we, we went out there to play a game, right? You know, and at the end of the day, I have a family to take care of. You know, I have, I have a home to come back to and I have kids and grandkids and a husband that are counting on me and I have to represent, you know, for them, for Kentucky, for the culture that I was brought up in, you know, that, that the underdog can come in there and take it all. Even if we have to do it in an unorthodox, not so likable way. Couple of final questions and along those lines, 
there's a point in the game where a lot of the players face literally some ethical challenges, some things that they may even think uh, might be, um, you know, a bit unscrupulous in terms of playing the game. There's one player who sabotages some other players. You know, how did you feel about that whole dynamic of the game? Oh, my goodness. People are going to ask so many questions of not just me, but of of their spouse, of their friend sitting and watching the show. And they're going to question behaviors and they're going to wonder how someone could stoop to this level or not rise above to an integral uh, level. And here's what I have to say to that person. You're not starving to death. You're not sitting out in a completely drenching severely wet traumatizing cold environment with absolutely no resources barely enough to keep a fire going eh, you know every other day if you work hard enough for it and you're not completely disturbed by the people you have to live with every second is this person stealing your food is this person going to take your clothes that are keeping you warm at night from you because they know it will take you out. You are in fear of the elements and each other constantly. And you might die. This is not like your regular survival show, guys. Like we literally could have died any second. Grizzlies were in our camps. All of us were at risk every second. What would you do? to save your own life. Final question. You went through this whole experience. We'll find out if you win the million dollars, but what did you learn about yourself after surviving all of this? I learned that I'm not done. <laughs> I learned that Jill did not get outlasted. You know, I, I didn't reach my limits. I need to know what they are. And I didn't get that from Outlast. I need, I need more. I need to see where my tapping point is. I need to know who I am at the core. And I kind of get a glimpse of that with this, but I'm hoping it's just the beginning. Well, I want to thank you. It was a pleasure watching you throughout this show. We encourage everybody who's watching this interview to follow you and your other teammates on your journey on Netflix Outlast. It was a pleasure chatting with you, Jill. Thank you so much. Let's just cut their heads off. Come out, come out, wherever you are. We'll see you at the finish line, you weak-ass mother. Sammy, who 